Hi, I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson and you're watching Get Your Sax Together. From beginners to experts, I sax up your Sunday every week with technique stuff, player profiles, tips on playing great solos and of course my famous breakdowns of the world's best love sax lines. There's a lot of info out there on articulation, but in today's free online sax lesson, which is part one on this topic, I'm gonna cut through all the noise and teach you three basics of sax tonguing, which will instantly get you sounding better on virtually everything you play. Often when I take on new pupils, even some who've been learning with a teacher for some time, I'm shocked at their lack of tonguing. It's probably one of the most neglected aspects of woodwind playing I can think of, and I know this from direct personal experience. When I started playing clarinet at school in Scotland, I guess I must have been about nine or so at the time, my teacher, who used to nod off in lessons by the way, failed to mention anything about tonguing for two years. <laughs> my mum made me practice every day, bless her, so I still passed grades one, two, three, maybe even four, I can't remember but every examiner's sheet kept saying consistent lack of articulation. My mum, who played viola in the local amateur orchestra, was curious about this articulation thing in all the examiner's reports. So one day she spoke to a pro clarinetist who was working with the orchestra, and she fixed up a lesson for me. Well, all I can tell you is that I never saw that school clarinet teacher again, and it turned out I'd passed three or four grades without tonguing a single note. My teacher, my new teacher couldn't believe it. It goes to show that it's never too late to learn the basics of articulation, which is exactly what I'm gonna show you today. You're gonna to learn the smallest amount of information that's gonna give you the biggest return on your playing. Before we start, make sure you go down into the description for this video and click the link to download your free PDF cheat sheet for this lesson so you can follow along. As I'm sure you already know, the vibrating reed is the device that produces the sound on a saxophone. Put simply, tonguing is when we touch the reed with our tongue, stopping or severely dampening the reed's ability to vibrate and make noise. We can use this technique to start and stop our sax sound with control. To contrast this with another reed instrument where tonguing is impossible, think of bagpipes for a moment. <laughs> that might be a painful thought, but stay with it. Bagpipes make a continuous, unbroken stream of sound, and the only way to distinguish a repeated note in a melody is with grace notes. Check out some bagpipe music if you want to see some serious grace note action. <laughs> However, on sax, we have the ability to momentarily stop the sound and shorten any note. Going back to bagpipes again, you might be familiar with that painful start-up sound as the bag fills with air. And on a much smaller scale, that's exactly what I was doing on clarinet with my first teacher every time I started a note. Each note began with a mini whoosh of air as the reed gradually got going. This is what happens without tonguing. Each note is fuzzy and undefined. By the same token, short notes without tonguing taper off at the end and don't sound very short or crisp. However, we can give each note and sax a clean attack and cut off using our tongue. So to summarize the basics then, we can do two things by touching the reed with our tongue. We can start a note cleanly without a surge, and we can stop a note instantly without a fade. Just before we dive into all of this, if you struggle with stuff like embouchure, improvising or technique, or if you're bored with scales and don't know how to structure a practice session, check out my Saxophone Success Masterclass. It's a full solid hour of teaching that isn't on YouTube to help transform your playing no matter what standard you are. And best of all, it's totally free. Just click the link in the description or go to www.getyoursaxtogether.com forward slash masterclass. Okay, on with the lesson now and a couple of important caveats on tonguing. Firstly, articulation is as personal and complex as each individual's fingerprint or speech. So the rabbit hole goes way deep on this topic, far too deep to cover in one or even 10 videos. If you go to YouTube and look for X-ray videos of uh, the tongue while someone's playing sax or clarinet, you'll see the crazy and complex stuff that's happening in there. <laughs> also, one of the main reasons that people struggle with tonguing is that you can't see my tongue as I'm playing, I can't see my tongue when I'm playing, and you can't see your tongue while you're playing. We're triple blind. I have to tell you proprioceptively what I'm feeling in my mouth, and you have to interpret that and use trial and error to get it working. Plus, everyone has a unique physiology and your tongue is different from mine. It can also be kind of gross <laughs> looking at close-ups of people pointing, their, pointing to their tongues in lessons. However, short of teaching in a double x-ray studio, that's what we're stuck with, I'm afraid, so we're just gonna have to do our best. 
If there's something about articulation that you really struggle with, I'd love to hear your feedback, so leave me a comment down below. Let's talk about the actual physical process of tonguing then. At the most basic level, you're going to use the area just back from the tip of the tongue, about a centimeter or two or a quarter of an inch, half an inch or so back, and gently press it against the tip of the reed. You should focus your touch on the thin front tip of the reed, not the flat part. Once in contact with the tip of the reed, the tongue then releases back and slightly down, letting the reed vibrate like this. You should experiment with tongue position, how much surface area you use and how lightly you touch the reed to vary the attack of your articulation. There's a lot of talk in the sax tuition space about syllables like saying ta, da or the. But what everyone seems to ignore is that you can't say any of those sounds when you've got a lump of plastic or metal in your mouth. <laughs> For that reason, I always get a bit confused with the whole syllables thing. I think to begin with, your best bet is to experiment and find something that's easy and effective. Don't worry if it's a bit spitty and noisy to start with. Once you've got the basic feel for touching the reed with your tongue, this method can be used in three main ways. The first way to use that tongue movement we just learned is to start a note from scratch. This technique should be used every time we start a note with a new breath, unless it's a very, very quiet phrase that creeps in gradually for nothing. To do this, we already have the tongue on the reed just before we blow, and at the instant we blow the air into our horn, we pull our tongue off the reed like this. Initially, it can be useful to practice basic articulation with just your neck and mouthpiece to minimize distractions. So technique one sounds like this. That gives us the familiar ch or t transient at the start of the note and makes sure we get a nice, clean, crisp start to each note. The second way we use tonguing is to articulate a note within a breath. Whilst blowing a continuous stream of air, we can briefly touch the reed with our tongue and then quickly take it off. This light touch of our tongue on the reed momentarily interrupts the sound, indicating a new note. I call this legato tonguing, and it can be either used to repeat a note, or we can coordinate our fingers to move at the same time as our tongue, clearly articulating a different note. Unless the notes in a phrase are intentionally slurred, this technique should be used for every note you play. It's the default. The main goal here is to try and minimize the time your tongue, your tongue is in contact with the reed so you don't get a big gap in the sound. Again, experiment with the position and surface area of your tongue and how much pressure you use. You should aim for the minimum effective tongue movement to articulate efficiently. Here's what legato tonguing sounds like. The third and final use of the tongue is to stop a note dead. The most common use of this is to play a short note. As soon as we pull our tongue back from the reed to start a note, we immediately put it back as fast as we can and keep it there. This is called staccato tonguing. Try to imagine a kitchen tap with a handle or a faucet, <laughs> I guess our American friends would say. Pulling your tongue off the reed is the equivalent of opening the water flow with a handle and then you immediately shut off the water flow with a handle, which is like putting your tongue back on the reed. This gives a sudden, powerful gush of water that immediately stops. The most important part of this metaphor is that the strong mains water pressure is constantly present behind the tap, and our breath pressure is constantly present. It's your tongue that stops and starts the sound, not your breath. You should be blowing throughout. In fact, once you cut off that sound with your tongue, you should feel the back pressure of the breath in your mouth. This should give you a really nice crisp short note. As usual, experiment with the different tongue positions and patterns to get a nice short note. Okay, so far so good. Let's have a quick recap of those points now. Our tongue can be used to instantly dampen the vibrations of the reed and stop the sound. This lets us start and stop notes cleanly. 
These transients also give the saxophone its distinctive sound. The three basic ways we can use tonguing are, number one, starting a note with a new breath, number two, articulating new notes within a phrase, which is called legato tonguing, and number three, stopping the sound dead to produce short notes called staccato tonguing. This video is only covering the very basics, and I'm sure everyone wants the sexy stuff like jazz articulation, Derek Bryan style double tonguing and slap tonguing, doodle tonguing, and whatever other weird and wonderful techniques you've heard about. But if you just get super clear on these fundamentals, it will instantly solve 99% of your articulation problems, and if applied correctly, will get you instantly sounding better. I should also say at this point, your tongue is a muscle and should be treated and trained like any other muscle. There's a load of exercises to train that muscle and I haven't forgotten about that, but I don't feel tonguing drills are necessary at this stage. You can drastically improve your playing articulation by simply mastering the basic three moves and applying them. I mean, how often do you actually need to tongue 16th notes at 120 BPM? <laughs> when I make the other videos on, artic on articulation, we'll go a bit deeper and learn some drills at that point. Now let's look at a very simple example to demonstrate the three techniques we've learned. But to do that, we need to learn the basics of how to notate tonguing. Before we see articulation in practice, let's cover the basics of notation. I know many of you don't read music, but even if you don't, it could still be useful to learn this stuff as you'll surely come across music at some point. Not least the PDFs you get from me. <laughs> if you go down into the description and click the link, you can get the free PDF cheat sheet for this lesson, which has these markings explained as well as the examples we're gonna play. Also, the vast majority of you guys play pop, soul, funk, jazz, blues, and other secular music forms. But if you play classical music, the rules can be kind of different and they're much more subject to context and interpretation. What I'm describing here is the convention for most non-classical music. First of all, if nothing is marked, just tongue the note and play it full length, easy. Specific symbols for articulation are added directly above the note head or sometimes directly below the note head if the stem of that note goes up. Personally, I always put an articulation above the note head, regardless, I just prefer that. For longs and shorts, think Morse code. Dashes are long, dots are short. A dash, got a 10 U2, means play the note long for its full value. Yeah, I know that's the same as having nothing above the note, but often it's better to be specific as an unmarked note could be subject to artistic interpretation. A dot above the note means play it short. This is called staccato. Don't confuse these staccato dots above the note with actual dotted notes. Now here's the cool thing about short notes with a dot in commercial music. I know I'm generalizing here, but basically short is short. There's really only one short, whether it's a crotchet quarter note with a dot above it or a semiquaver 16th note with a dot above it, it's still the same, just play it short. <laughs> Finally, if there's a curved line over the notes called a slur, it means tongue the first note, but then join up all the other notes underneath the slur smoothly without tonguing them. The exception to this is if there's uh, repeated notes under a slur, which should be legato tongued as lightly as possible. That's it, that's 99% of what you need to know. Let's look at Old MacDonald Had a Farm, that soul funk classic, to practice our basic tonguing patterns. Even intermediate players might be surprised at how little attention they were actually paying to this stuff. T means a normal tongue note, ST means a short staccato tongue, LT means a legato tongue, and X means don't tongue it at all. I'm not saying that I'd play this song like this, by the way, it's just to demonstrate the three techniques. This is what it sounds like. Moving on to a more realistic example that you might actually wanna play. <laughs> Let's look at Pick Up The Pieces by The Average White Band. I think the original phrasing is slightly more choppy than this, but for the purposes of practice, let's just use the markings here. You can see the first two notes are slurred, so you only tongue the first note. Then there's a long short on the next two notes, so tongue the first one and staccato tongue the second one. When you play a short note, make it as short as you can. The second phrase had the same phrasing. Then there's 
no phrasing marked. So it will just tongue those three notes. The tied note over the bar line is tongued, of course, and then it's short, long, short. So staccato tongue, tongue, staccato tongue. This is repeated to finish off the phrase. Here's what it sounds like in slow motion and then in real time. Once you've got these basics together, the best way of learning good phrasing is to study your favourite players and transcribe them. The card above links to my series on transcription if you want to do this. It really is the number one way that you can transform your playing. Virtually all your favourite licks just use the basic three patterns we've learned today. It's all about how you apply them. Just to show you how important phrasing is, I'll now play Pick Up The Pieces with little or no attention to phrasing, then with intentional and correct phrasing. You should be able to hear a distinct uptake in funk immediately. <laughs> Here we go. So that's it for this Sunday. What you've learned could and should instantly transform how good you sound. There will be more parts on articulation in the future, but this lesson will always be the most important. If you want to learn some in-depth sax stuff, go to www.getyoursaxtogether.com forward slash masterclass and get your free one hour lesson with me. And as always, you can support me by giving this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, Click the bell icon to be notified when I upload new content. Check out my Insta and Facebook pages and don't forget to use the link in the description to pick up your free PDF cheat sheet for this lesson. I'll see you for more awesome sax malarkey next week. <laughs> Laters! At how little attention they've been paying. <clears throat> Fruit bats. Each note began with a mini whoosh of air as the grad regionally keep rolling, keep rolling. <laughs>